Good morning, or good afternoon, or good evening, whatever time it is when you watch this. We're going to have a look at a, an interesting new pen from um, Taiwan. It's from Fine Writing International, um, a company of stationers in Taiwan. But, um, like right here, they have the good sense occasionally to make their own pens, or get someone to make them for them anyway. So without any more ado, let's go and have a look and see what they're offering us this time. OK then, here we are, a white box with a letter M on the bottom. And inside it we find a tin. Here we go, get it the right way up for you. And here we can see there's a, an oriental design but we also see here the emblem of Fine Writing International, the aforementioned Taiwanese, Taiwanese stationers. So let's just take a look at what's inside. Well, we have our easy to read and follow instructions, telling us, no doubt, that this is a pen that will take a standard cartridge, and it will take the Long Waterman version of that. Um, it also lets you know it has a converter, but what's most interesting, I suppose, is that it's also an eyedropper. So, let's move this out of the way. Now, the first thing you notice about the pen is that it is quite heavy. And that's because the cap, the knob, and the section are all made out of solid brass, which is rather nice. In terms of size, let's do a quick comparison. There we go. Oh, never quite right with this. There we go. So there we go. That's it. This is a Twisby 580. So we'll see it's almost exactly the same length and so forth. And this is an old favourite, a Lamy Safari. Now in terms of length, there's not a lot in it. I would say the Safari is slightly smaller thinner, but there we go. And in terms of the size of the section, oh, I should have learnt that by now. Wonderful. There we go. Famous triangular on here, on here, nicely shaped. And with this pen from Fine Writing International, there we go. Well, not a great deal in it, I would say. So, if the Twisby 580 is a good size for you, and for that matter, if the Lamy Safari is a good size for you, this pen will probably work for you. So let's get the imposters out of the way and get on with the real thing. And the first thing to do is to address the issue of weight, because this is a very heavy pen. In fact, it weighs 56 grams. Now that compares with about 30 grams for the Twisby, and that's full of ink, and for the Safari, about 20 grams. How does the weight split up here? Well, 54 grams for the whole thing. About 30 grams of that is the cap, but that still leaves 24 grams as the weight of the pen alone. I wouldn't post this. Um, you probably could. Let's have a look. Yeah, you can. Actually, it doesn't feel quite as bad as I thought it might actually, but there we are. But you like to scratch the brass, which may or may not be a great idea, I don't know. Um, but I've got to say, this actually feels fairly nice. And we're going to do a right test in a minute, so we'll be able to test that. But it looks to me as if the weight of the knob at the back balances very nicely with the weight of the section at the front. So there we are. Right, now let's have a closer look. So the first thing to notice is that there is an interesting design on the cap which does not have a clip. So this is a desk pen. All you're going to have to put it in a case. And there we are. Also, we 
take a look at the nib. Now on the extra fine and the medium pens you have this rather nice gold nib. Um, gold is not on the fine, broad or the stub. That's different, different colour nib. Still very nice looking but not quite the same. There we go. Now looking in a bit more detail at the pen itself you can see all the working there, very nice indeed. Open this up. Now, there's sometimes a bit of an issue with pens that have metal and plastic together. Now, I don't know if anyone, if, if you remember looking at the video of this, which I posted ages ago, of somebody whacking this with a hammer. It's a very, very robust material, so I suspect it would survive quite nicely. Now, there's a converter in there at the moment. Let's just have a look here. It's just a push-in converter. There we are. And that seems to fit very snugly, as I would expect. But the other thing you'll notice is the gasket here. And that's because this pen is an eyedropper. Now, I say eyedropper. I've personally never found eyedroppers particularly convenient. And an interesting innovation that fine writing have brought in is to use a very surgical syringe without a needle to do the business of filling the pen. And I've got to say, I've tried this several times, it works a treat. A really good idea. I wouldn't be surprised if people start copying this. And if you've got an eyedropper pen, try and get a hold of one of these. You never know, we might get some here and sell them on. So there we go. So we've had a pretty good look. We've had a look at the designs on the knob. There we go. And on the pen itself. Nice looking pen. But I think the important thing to do now is see how it writes. So we shall get back down and have a look. Right then, here we go again with a bit of a writing test. Now, as I suspected, the balance is actually very nice indeed. Um, I find that the weight of a pen doesn't actually make a lot of difference to how comfortable it is to use. What's important is the balance, and this is pretty much perfect, actually. Absolutely right. Now, I might as well convey some useful information. So. Having a bit of a dip into, rather sadly, almost the last of my Omas um, violet ink. Um, I will reveal that the length capped 14.1 centimetres and the length open is 13.2 centimetres. Now, in terms of writing, you'll see it works extremely well. Um, I mean, it's not an exciting nib, but it does the job. It's a steel nib, it's a Jovo nib, so it should really work extremely well. A Jovo nib. There we go. So, it looks good, it feels good, it writes nicely. It's certainly interesting. Um, it, it is one of the more interesting pens that I've come across. You don't often see a brass pen comes from Fine Writing International via right here pens. And that's us. So with apologies for um, the noises off this morning, we've had ambulances going past, dogs barking in the high street and the merry sound of, what's the opposite of a shop fitter? That's an interesting one. Um, they're taking the House of Fraser shop that's been opposite us for the past 140 years. Um, they're taking it to bits because it closed yesterday. It's very sad, but there we go. But what's good news is that this is an excellent pen. I'll leave it with you. Thanks very much indeed for watching. Cheerio.